10 years later, you wake up and you realize, what the hell am I doing? I'm still doing the same thing. I don't enjoy what I do. I wake up in the morning. I don't want to be in that office. So then figure out for your personality type, what are the things that you absolutely dislike doing? What bores you to tears? What makes you want to shoot yourself? I put intensity and passion into it. I basically took 10 years of progress and I packed it into two years. If you can't feel happy on the way to whatever goal you want to accomplish, you probably are going the wrong direction. Are you living someone else's dream? Are you living life on your own terms? What is your definition of success? Our next guest is Jimmy Noray, the world's top authority on course creation with half a million students online. We are going to learn how to uncover our North Star, build a life that we love, and how to build self-confidence. Join us. You started working with Goldman Sachs. At some point, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then there was a moment mm -hmm. you realized that the corporate job was not for you. Yeah. Tell me about that. It's funny because, you know, I have to do it. I'm going to break the rules. I'm going to talk directly to the audience. The funny thing is that, so with Rodrigo, we had already a conversation two days ago. We met um, on this nice rooftop and we planned to talk for 40 minutes or something like that. Ended up talking for two hours. We pretty much did a podcast without a podcast, right? <laughs> Had a great conversation. So he's asking really good questions because he knows a lot about my story by now. But yeah, you're right. So when I was in Goldman Sachs, you know, initially this was the dream. This was the pinnacle, right? Everyone told me back at university, if you want to make it, you have to work for Goldman Sachs. You have to work for Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, or, or you know, uh, KPMG, BCG, all of those big companies, right? But Goldman Sachs was on the top of the list. So what do you do when you are this insecure Polish kid who's trying to fill some void inside, right? Well, you go, you work for Goldman. But I realized at some point that it was someone else's dream. It wasn't my dream. Now listen, I learned a lot, so I'm grateful for the experience, met some awesome people there, but I knew very quickly it just wasn't for me, right? And I think one of the moments, and this is a good experiment for everyone to do right now, look at people who do what you do, but are 10 years ahead of you, right? So I looked at some of the MDs, some of the top level people there, and asked myself, do I wanna be that person? Do I wanna live like this? And the ass was resounding, no. I, 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 I don't want to do that. This is not my life. So I started feeling a bit trapped. And there was one moment when I got so frustrated, I told you about it. It's a, it's a funny thing because I actually, I had a couple of drinks. Don't remember which drink. And, 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 but what I remember is that I wasn't completely sober. But a couple of drinks and I started fantasizing about my ideal future life, right? I got frustrated with, with working for a big corporation. And I wrote an email to my Italian friend Gianluca, who also lived in the UK. We met at the university, right? And I said something in the lines of, hey, you know, I'm tired of this, of this, of this work, you know, and this is what I really want to do. I'm going to be traveling the world. I'm going to be exploring. I'm going to build a business. I'm going to create impact. I'm going to have a sense of contribution. I'm going to wake up in the morning, you know, by the beach. And then I'm going to jump on a plane and fly somewhere and do this. And, and I described everything, right? Stream of consciousness. And then afterwards, I felt good, right? <laughs> I felt good. So then I read it and I realized, wow, like this is literally the picture of my ideal future life that I would like to live. And then I asked myself a very important question. And by the way, this wasn't some exercise I read about somewhere. I just did it intuitively. I didn't know what it's going to lead to. But at some point I asked myself, okay, if I want to be there, if this is the snapshot of my ideal life, will what I'm doing right now get me there? Mm -hmm. And I realized it's never going to happen because I want to be over there. But I'm here and I'm heading that direction. I'm heading completely different direction, right? So if, if I want to be over there in the north, that's my northern star, and I'm going to the south, it doesn't matter how, how hard I work, I'll never, I'll never get there. And that's when I realized that I need to change something. The change didn't happen overnight, but the seed was planted. That's when I started proactively thinking about becoming an entrepreneur. Hmm. And can you describe me what was the feeling? What did it feel like when you were like, there and feeling frustrated and what what it looked like the, okay so that's a good question the feeling the feeling it, it kind of felt in a weird way okay some days i was excited there are moments when it was exciting i just have to put it for the record right there are moments when i thought to myself wow we are 
we have this big crisis now and I'm making this and I'm going there and I'm, I'm traveling here, I'm doing that. I'm trying to make this happen. But most of the time I felt trapped. The feeling of being trapped. You know this feeling in your stomach, you know, when you're back at school and you know, there's that one class that doesn't really give you anything and you know you just have to go there and just have to sit through it and the teacher doesn't like you either, right? It pulls you to the front. This type of feeling. So I, I actually remember sometimes I would literally go, and now I can say this, right? I can say this. I would sometimes go to the bathroom and they had those very high cubicles, right? Like separated with like, you know, pretty thick um, wooden walls and I would just... I would just sit there for like 15, 20 minutes and I would meditate. I would literally, I would sit like this and I would just meditate and I would imagine that I'm somewhere else. I would imagine that <laughs> I'm traveling, that I'm, I'm, I'm my own boss, that I'm building a business. I would imagine those things and then alarm would go off and quickly, you know, and then I would, I would turn it off and then I realize, oh, <laughs> I'm here sitting on a cubicle. So then, of course, I would flash the water, go outside, splash some cold water on my face go back to the office, right? But that was the feeling of frustration, feeling of being trapped. And I realized life is short, right? Life is literally ending one minute, one second at a time. Like we're not getting younger. And what I noticed, the older you get, the, the quicker time goes. And when you yeah. talk to some really old people, they'll tell you, wow, when I hit 60 years old, it's like each year just goes like this. It goes so fast, right? And at some point you just gotta make a decision. Like, will you settle? Will you settle? Or will you decide to play big enough? Because I don't remember who said it, there's a, there's a quote about this that, you know, you can fail at playing small anyway. Like, there are no guarantees just because you play, play it safe, just because you play small. Doesn't mean you're going to win. So, if you don't have any guarantee of success, then why not at least try to fail at playing big? Hmm. And did you always think big since you were young? And what was the moment that you start believing that you could do something bigger and you start believing more in yourself. Uh -huh. Well, if I want to change my life, and if I want, and one of my aspirations was to get out of Poland and travel the world, I realized, okay, number one, I have to learn English. Not just learn, I have to master English. That was number one thing. And then number two, I have to get good grades so I can actually go and study in the UK or in the US, right? So that's when I started on this mission of just every day, constant learning, you know, memorizing literally hundreds of words every day. I would write lists of English <laughs> words and I would just like, I would just memorize them every day like a maniac, you know, and it worked. And, and, and that was, a, it's a good question by the way, because I don't talk about this a lot, almost never, right? But uh, this was a big moment because I realized that you can hack your life, you can hack your reality. Because you realize if within two years, you can go from speaking like this, like, uh, Hey, Jimmy, so how was your holiday? The English teacher asks. Uh, holiday, uh, good, good. Uh, family, me, we go uh, Baltic Sea and we, uh, we enjoy uh, swim, swim and uh, eat, um, eat uh, fish. You know, from, going to, from that point to being able to converse with anybody about any topic, within two years, you realize like, wow, like, normally this would take much longer, but because I put intensity and passion into it. I basically took 10 years of progress and I packed it into two years, right? And that's when I started realizing if I did it with English, if I did it with my school exams, I could do it with anything. And then I replicated this. I learned Spanish in a month. I went to Spain and I wow. just talked to people on the streets every single day, 100, 150 strangers just talking to them. And I replicated this with so many things, with my speaking career, with, my, with building video courses, with, with working with corporates, while doing corporate training. I realized there's a reality and you can negotiate that reality. And there are certain hacks you can use to do things faster and to do them better. And, and last thing I'm gonna say, when you have a goal, you say you wanna accomplish something 10 years. I, I think Peter, Peter Thiel said this, um, and I, I believe in it. If you want to accomplish something in 10 years, why not ask yourself, what would it take to accomplish it in a year? Mm. What would I have to do? And the first answer that comes to your mind is, but it's impossible, I can't. In one year, not possible. But then ask yourself, what if I really had to accomplish it in one year? Like, there's no other option. What would I have to do? And you start thinking outside the box, right? You really start thinking outside the box. You realize, wow, like, this was my thinking, and within this thinking, there are no options. But now you change your paradigm and your thinking shifts to here and you realize, oh wow, like, so you wanna build an audience from scratch. Okay, you can do it a regular way. 
What if you find two people mm -hmm. to partner with who already have a massive audience? Bam, you just jump over mm -hmm. certain, certain hoops, right? That's just one example, but there are plenty. Yeah. What I find fascinating is what you, young, you already started, I mean, without mentors or you already had that feeling like, I want to do this, you know, and you went after it, committed to that. And today, I mean, if we fast forward today, I mean, today, I mean, you, you have half a million students, you know, you are a trainer for Fortune 500 uh, companies and y you travel around the world. Okay, that's a long journey. Let's go back and understand what were the three major things that you did that took you where you are today? Number one thing is just thinking big. That's, not, that's the foundation. Yeah. Just thinking big, um, believing in yourself, realizing that you actually control your reality. What we talked about a little bit before, right? But in the context of I am I, I'm able to do what I want to do, right? And just upgrading my thinking. Um, you know, it's very hard to go beyond our size of thinking. If, if you're thinking small, you, you are not likely to accomplish big things. You, you, you are not. But if you start thinking big, sure, you won't succeed all the time, but at least you give yourself a shot. Um, and part of it is building confidence. Like, start believing in yourself. And, and, you know, for me, it was about changing my internal dialogue and changing my self-image. You know, so for example, back in Poland, my self-image was that I would close my eyes if I visualize myself, I see a kid with you know, uh, those weird elf ears that I still have. Now I, I appreciate them. Now this is part of who I am, right? Your perfections make you perfect in a sense, right? But back then, elf ears, right? That's all I saw, mm -hmm. right? Um, I saw a shy kid. I saw a kid who was always an outsider. So guess what happens? When you perceive yourself as an outsider, there's a sense of rejection. It's almost like, oh, the reason I'm an outsider is because I got rejected by the crowd, by the society. So now you feel like you are not worthy, you are not good enough, okay? So that was my self-image. And then I started working on it and changing my, ident my identity, right? Rather than thinking about what I think I am, I started asking myself, who do I want to become? And I adopted that as my new identity. I think that's really important because oftentimes we think you have to become someone to have the identity of that person. But I feel like it works the other way around. You first adopt the identity of the person you want to be, and that allows you to actually become that person. Okay, so that's number one. Um, second thing was pushing my comfort zone. I know it may sound uh, cheesy, and a lot of people out there talk about it, but guess what, they talk about it for a reason. You gotta push your comfort zone. The example of you know learning Spanish on the streets of Spain, I mean, it was utterly uncomfortable, especially at the beginning. Imagine, you know, I'm, I went to Malaga, Andalusia. Imagine my Spanish back then, day one, was broken. It was almost non-existent. I could literally just order a bottle of water and say hello and thank you and goodbye. And that was it. So imagine, I go on the streets. And I had social anxiety in the past, by the way. So I was still dealing with that and trying to overcome that. Right? So imagine I'm going on the streets with a bunch of pieces of paper. And I see people there. And I say, uh, perdón. Donde está el supermercado? And you know, Spanish people in Andalusia, they speak, I picked the wrong place, you know? <laughs> they speak, it's like, oh, hermano, blah, blah. and they start to, it's like, oh, muchas gracias. Okay, with this, you know, bit of a stiff accent. And then I go to the next person, and the next person, next to, you know, you know, a week later, I speak a bit better. And maybe I go on, it's like, hola, perdón, donde está la buena fiesta? And then again, fast, like, oh, hermano, hay mucha fiesta acá, blah, 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 blah. I was like, whoa, okay. Muchas gracias. <laughs> Repeat 100, 150 times. And, and there were uncomfortable moments. I would purposely push myself, right? It's a group of 10 people. Public speaking. It's a form of public speaking in a foreign language. So I kept doing that. I did the same thing with public speaking on actual stages. I was always afraid of it. So guess what? When you are afraid, you just have to go out there and you just have to expose yourself to it. And I still vividly remember those moments when, you know, your, your heart is beating really fast and you're sweating profusely. You have thousands of thoughts in your head and you just don't know if you're going to make it. You mm -hmm. think, well, maybe if you go out there in front of all of those people, you will pass out like flat on your face. But guess what? You do it and then you overcome it and then you do it again and again. And, and it's not an overnight process. You know, oftentimes people, you know, people, people try to sell you something, especially they promise you, oh, I'm going to teach you how to do X, Y and Z overnight. None of this will happen overnight, okay? It takes, it takes practice, it takes effort. Okay, so that's number two. 
Number three, well, there are a lot of things I could talk about here. Um, but number three, I would say um, systems, systems and habits. Developing certain systems and habits and sticking to them, right? Because say you wanna get healthy, you wanna start going to the gym or, or, or do any type of sport, right? It's easy to do it at a high intensity for a week or even for a month, that's easy. You fired up, you watched some video, maybe you watched a movie, got inspired, bam, do it for a week. What's not easy is to stay consistent for five, 10, 20 years. So I realized early on, not just by myself, but reading a lot of books and talking to a lot of people, that habits really create you. Because people often say, well, it's just five minutes a day, it's just 10 minutes a day, that's nothing. Well, when you multiply it by the number of days in a year or in a decade, that is a lot of time, that is real consistency. So early on I realized, okay, I need certain habits of success mm. and they have to become non-negotiable. Like for instance, exercise. To me, it's like, like a religion, right? Like I just, I have to exercise. You know, I have to meditate. Like I have to do certain things. It's a part of my routine. And as a full-time traveler, it can get tough sometimes. You go to a new place, especially when you go to like, like smaller countries, you know, or smaller regions and developing countries. There's no gym, there's nothing, right? It's hard to find healthy food sometimes. It doesn't matter. This is the non-negotiable, right? If it means I have to travel for 40 minutes to the other side of town or to a different town to hit a gym or to go for MMA workout or whatever it is, I'm gonna do it because it's a part of that. And when you create those non-negotiables, Ultimately, over time, you, you look in the mirror and you kind of you have to scratch yourself. Whoa, this is who I became? Well, you became that person through the power of all of those habits. Yeah. Wow. So it's, and your energy is so, so good, man. I really, really, really <laughs> love it, man. It. So, so good. So I, 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 for you, it was about first, I mean, you define who, who, who's that person that I want to be, right? Yeah. You had that, that vision. And then you put yourself out there out of your comfort zone and that made you like explore and try and grow, right? Yeah. And then you build the systems around that kept you going, right? In, yeah. in, in that journey. That's fantastic. I, 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 see, I, I see many people today that they, they stay in jobs that they don't love. You know, and, and they keep in, in, in they stay they stay there for for a long time. Why do you think there's many people that they don't love their jobs and they s stay there? I think and I, I used to be there, right? So so I can resonate. Um, I feel like the big problem is that we never really took the time to figure out what we want and what we don't want. So when I went to work for Allianz and Goldman Sachs, I, it wasn't my dream. It was someone else's dream, right? And I think a lot of people can resonate with this. I'm sure a lot of people, because you know, I, I talk to people about this, so I know a lot of people resonate with this. And, and you have to take the time for yourself to figure, to figure it out. Otherwise, you're kind of like a flag on the wind. The society, your peers, your parents, your teachers, they tell you what you gotta do. Yeah. Um, and what happens oftentimes is we are stuck in the golden handcuffs, right? So, so you follow this traditional path uh, paved by this society. Oh, go get an internship. And when you finish university, go and get that big job in a big corporation. When you don't stop and you don't pause to really reflect, is this what I really want to do? Like, what is the direction that I'm trying to take here in my life? At some point, you, will, you may get to the point where you make 100K per year, 150, maybe 200,000 per year. That's good money, right? So guess what, now you think, well, I can afford this house, or I can afford this flat or this car, or I can afford a nice watch, after all I need it, because I do business meetings, you know, this show status, right? Mm -hmm. So you rationalize all of those things to yourself, and next thing you know, you find yourself being uh, two million or three or whatever uh, euros in debt, right? Now there's nothing wrong with debt per se, right? Of course there's good debt and bad debt, and time for different, different conversation, right? Um, but you start feeling stuck because you realize, okay, now you have all of those payments and you're on this job and it's just good enough. It's just good enough and it provides you enough money for all those payments that you have to make. So now you feel like you're stuck, right? And it makes you feel utterly uncomfortable. And we don't like to feel uncomfortable. So what is easier? Is it easier to you know, face the truth and to sit down and to really, really take the time to figure out, do I really want to do this? Maybe at some point I made the wrong decision. Maybe I took a wrong turn. Maybe I have to go a different way. 
but that's uncomfortable. So what's much easier? You know what? It's gonna be fine, you know? Just be grateful, it's gonna be fine. Keep doing what you're doing. And the next thing you know, 10 years later, you wake up and you realize, what the hell am I doing? I'm still doing the same thing. I don't enjoy what I do. I wake up in the morning, I don't wanna be in that office. But guess what? Now you are the managing director. Now you have even more money. So now the handcuffs get even bigger. And, I've, and, and by the way, I'm not saying corporate is bad. There are a lot of people who work in the corporate, they are happy. There are certain advantages, you know? Like when I go to hotels, I pay from my own pocket, right? I have my own business. You know, here I go to Marriott in Singapore, and I was like, okay, this is how much you have to pay. I pay. Corporates, they have their rates. If you're an employee of a corporation, they take care of you. So I get it, there are advantages. But you have to ask yourself, what is your definition of success, right? Like, what, how do you want to live your life? Everyone is different. Some people want to live their lives working for corporates. Someone wants to do a podcast. Other people would never want to do a podcast. They, they hate talking to people like this, right? So everyone is different, but you gotta find your own path. Mm. But do you think there might be some misconceptions about success? There are a lot. There are a lot. Like? Yeah. The biggest misconception is that we often, when we think about success, we assume erroneously that success is just about finances, right? You have a lot of money, you, uh, you have a big car, you have a big house. Uh, well, you are, by the way, I say big car, not necessarily. You can have a nice little Porsche, right? And, I, and, I'm not, and I'm not hating here on cars, I love cars myself. But you know, we assume big car, you know, or, or a small fancy car or, or nice watch. We think this is success. And you know, sure, that can be success to some extent. That's one angle of, of being successful, but it's just one angle, it's just one ingredient. And there are so many more ingredients, right? You may like garlic, but if you go to the restaurant and you know, the chef makes some uh, risotto for you and just like dumps like half a kilo of garlic and doesn't add anything else, it won't taste good. So for some reason, we think, oh, if I just make a lot of money, or I get a very high position in a company, I will be successful. Yeah. No, there are other things missing. There are other currencies in life. For example, your health, right? That's a massive one. And, and, you know, and let me actually talk a little bit about health, right? Because oftentimes people, people ask me, why do you do ice baths all the time? Why do you push yourself? Why do Thai boxing or Spartan races? Why do you go, why do you go to the gym? Why do all of those things? Uh, why experience all this pain and sweat and all of that and discomfort? Well, you have to choose your pain. I prefer to experience pain now and short term every single day to avoid much bigger pain in the future, right? The pain of regret and the pain of disease, right? So anyway, health, that's one, one ingredient of successful life. Another one, friendships, right? Your family. And look, if you focus too much on just making money and just climbing the ranks in a corporation, your family is suffering. You can't spend the time with your family. Or you think you spend the time with your kids, but you are not mindful. And we all know, and it's so weird because we all know it, because a lot of us experienced it, but we replicate the same mistake. When you are not present, your kids know. When I was a kid, my father was working extremely hard, right? Like he tried to make ends meet. It wasn't easy in Poland. And he was a great dad in many ways, but I still remember those times when I just needed a mentor. Mm -hmm. I just, I didn't need someone to tell me, you know, leave me alone, I'm, I'm working hard, you know, because I need, I need to provide for you so you can go to school and you can put food on the plate. I get that. But sometimes a kid just needs a little bit of attention, like real genuine attention. Hey, how's everything? I can sense something is not right at school. What, what's going on? Let's talk about it, right? If you are too busy dealing with the carpet all the time, you won't give it to your kids. And then those same kids, 15, 20 years later, you know, they go to therapy trying to fix that, right? So that's another one, right? Another one is, um, another currency of life is uh, freedom, right? Mobility, right? Can you spend the time with people you love wherever you want, whenever you want, right? If, if you know, if there's a great gathering of old friends in Singapore, for example, and you live in LA, can you actually say, yeah, you know, I want to be there, I want to be with all of them, let me go there. Or do you have to say, well, sorry guys, I, I just can't, I don't have enough holiday this year, we are really busy and my boss told me I can't do it, right? So again, I could keep going on and on, but there are so many different currencies and I feel like oftentimes we just optimize for cash. Nothing wrong with cash. I'm also a fan, it's, it's good to have money, it mm -hmm. helps, it certainly solves a lot of problems, right? But that's just one.
let's work on the others. And I think one of the best things you can do is to sit down, take a piece of paper, put on some nice music, get a glass of red wine, juice, whatever it is that you like to drink, relax, take time for yourself, and ask yourself, what are my currencies? How do I define a successful life? Forget about what the society tells you, forget about what your boss says or what your parents say, right? what your wife or, or husband say. Forget about all of that, think just about yourself. What is your definition? Write those things down, build a picture visually, and then as you look at it, it's gonna give you so much more clarity to actually define where you wanna go. And you may realize, by the way, that you've been heading that direction, that was your northern star, or someone else's, right? You thought it was your northern star, but you realize your true star is maybe over there, right? And, and, and maybe, maybe you don't wanna you know, radically shift like this, but maybe you want to make a little change, just a little change. Mm. I, I think, <clears throat> I think so. You you mentioned um, so. It's one is 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 about not being uh, uh, not seeing just in one direction, yeah. but to see it more broad. You know, and I think what you say is that a lot of people they focus on one or two, mm -hmm. and then they cannot see the others. Yeah. And you, you you mentioned something very interesting, which is about you need to be aware, you need to be clear about what you want. And, and, but sometimes I see many people, their biggest struggle is they, they don't know yeah. what they want, yeah. what they love, you know? So what is your advice for people who are looking for answers but they're not able to find what they want and what they love? Yeah, so the first thing is what we just talked about, like define, define yeah. what success means to you, define your currencies of success. That's number one, right, I would say. That's gonna already help you a lot. Um, second thing I would say, figure out what you absolutely hate, what you don't like. Mm. You know, for me, I knew early on that I just didn't resonate with being stuck working for someone. I knew that. This is just my personality type. Also what I went through in Poland, you know, some bad teachers. I would, I would solve math's equation using my own solution. You know, the teacher should have said, Oh, wow, that's great. Can you show the class how you figure this out? Because the, you know, the answer is correct. But the teacher would say, wrong. It's either my way or no way, zero points. Don't ever do it again. Like, come on, like, that doesn't really encourage learning. So very quickly, I, I developed this disdain for authority, right? Very early on. And uh, so that's my personality type. I just don't resonate with uh, working for someone. So, but everyone is different. For some people, I know people who can't be entrepreneurs. And, and they say it very openly, right? I met people who literally tell me, you know what, man? If someone tells me what to do, like do this and do this, and this is the deadline, I'm amazing at executing. But to start by myself proactively to figure it out, I don't like to deal with it. It stresses me out. So there are different types of people. Everyone is different. So, so then figure out for your personality type, what are the things that you absolutely dislike doing? What bores you to tears? What makes you wanna shoot yourself? And write those things down. And listen, if, if on a daily basis you engage in those activities, like every day that, that you see on that piece of paper that make you wanna go crazy, something's wrong. You have to change something. And again, it doesn't mean you have to burn all your bridges just like this. It's not that easy sometimes, you know? Um, sometimes, you know, the motivational speakers, they say, oh, just believe and burn all the bridges right away and do all of that stuff. Yeah, I, I disagree with that. I think everyone has their own story. Everyone has different situation. Maybe you have kids, maybe you have all, ty all types of financial commitments, right? I'm not saying quit the job you, you, you don't like right away. But you know what? At least don't get stuck in the same paradigm. At least shift your mindset a little bit and, and, and just dip your toes in that fresh water, try something else, try something different, do it on the side. If you wanna build a business, you don't necessarily have to quit your job right away. You can try to build a second stream of income on the side, right? Take an hour or two every day, uh, take a couple of weekends off, see what you can do with that time. And you know what? If you don't do anything with that extra time that you have, the chances are you probably will not enjoy entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship once you get started, it usually takes much more hours than you initially think, as you know very well, yes. right? <laughs> yeah. So you, you know what is interesting? I, like, I love what you say. So on one side, you, you, you put on a, on a piece of paper what you really love, what excites you, right? Mm -hmm. But on the other side, you put what you don't like. 
right? Yeah. And what I like is that when you start doing those things, you know, you feel it exactly how you felt when you were at Goldman Sachs. You felt something was not yeah. right, yeah. right? Okay, so I get that. But now, how do I move forward? Okay, once I, I know what I want, then what can I do in order to build a life that I really love and what I really want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would say just start with one step, one step at a time, mm -hmm. to make it very concrete. Um, again, oftentimes we, we perceive things as either black or white. You, you either do this or you don't do it. You either burn the bridges or you don't burn the bridges. And I feel like it is about creating a sense of progress, but progress into the right direction. Pro progression towards your northern star. So uh, if you try to make it too big, the chances are you won't even take action, right? You may be excited in the moment, you may watch this podcast, for example, say, oh wow, I wanna start this project, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. And the next thing you know, you had a rough night, you didn't sleep well, you wake up and you're like, ah, you know what, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. So start with making small changes. And then what happens is when you create those small steps, like, okay, my, so my objective, for the next week is just to do X or Y or Z, right? That's the only thing. And you know that that little step is gonna take you closer to the ultimate vision that you have. Guess what? Every time you accomplish that little objective, you feel better. Your self-esteem increases. You feel more confident, right? Because guess what? You said set, set, set to yourself, I'm gonna do something. You made a promise to yourself and then you do it. So when you do it, now you look in the mirror and, and, and you realize I'm the type of person who says that they're going to do something and they actually do it. So now you build your confidence. Mm. You feel better. So then you set the next target. Okay, well, let me push it to the next level. Let me then try this. Okay, bam, you do it again. Ooh, wow, your confidence goes even higher. And it's this upward spiral. You just feel better about yourself. You gain more confidence. So I think this is really the key. You know, I build video courses. So I, I do a lot of presenting about creating content. And one of the most common questions that I get from the audience afterwards, people come up to me, hey, enjoy the presentation, but let me ask you, like, what is the easiest way to blow up? You know, like, what do I have to do now to, like, really smash it and get like a ton of people and make a lot of money. And I'm like, well, you, like, I think you're missing the point. Like you are here and like you are at the, you literally just arrived in Nepal and you're already thinking like, how are you gonna climb the final ridge up the Everest or K2, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, sure, yeah, think about it, right? It's good, set the vision. But primarily, you should focus on the first uh, steps of the journey. Focus on the first phase. How will you get to the base camp, right? How will you go through the ice fall, yeah. right? So think about that. Um, we live in this world of instant gratification as well. So people get really lazy nowadays and people also get very impatient, mm -hmm. right? And, and you know, when you see all the success stories out there, it's very easy to think that your life sucks and you did something wrong, right? I mean, what, what we see out there is like, oh, this person made 150 million at the age of 16, right? Then you see someone else driving, you know, they're having 10 different Lambos. Then you read about crypto millionaires and billionaires. And, and then you see your childhood friend, you know, do an IPO. Listen, like 10 minutes on social media, and it's easy to think that your life absolutely sucks, right? That you have like the most boring, the most terrible life on this planet, but I feel like now we have to zoom out from that and realize that the couple of different, I don't want to you know, sidetrack too much, but it's all interconnected, right? Realize that when you see other people's success, you see just one ingredient, right? We talked about different ingredients of success. You see just one, you see one angle, you don't see the, what's underneath, you don't see insecurities, you don't see traumas, you don't see their failures and weaknesses, all of that stuff, right? So recognize that. And then once you recognize it, realize that, okay, listen, like, let me take my time, let me go the, the longer route, right? Don't need to get rich quick, it's great when that happens, mm -hmm. but let me plan a proper journey. Let me take those steps, let me build habits, let me, take, let me stay consistent, mm -hmm. and let me enjoy the journey. So rather than just putting that big goal and just chasing that goal as if that's gonna give you all happiness, do your best to derive a lot of happiness and fulfillment from the process, from the journey. And guess what? If you cannot do that, you have the wrong goal. Now seriously, if you, if you can't feel happy on the way to whatever goal you want to accomplish, 
you probably are going the wrong direction. Because I think in general goal setting, setting that Northern Star, like that's literally what it is. Northern Star is not there. Like if you are, if you're a fisherman, not nowadays, and so back, back in the day you were a fisherman, when you look at the Northern Star, you are not looking at it because you want to get there. Like you're not trying to actually physically get there. You are looking at it so it can give you the direction. So I think a lot of our goals, over time, they're gonna change. Like now you may think, I wanna build a massive business, I wanna do an IPO, right? Or whatever it is, whatever it is. Those goals will change over time. You may meet somebody, you set up a family, now you have kids, different things happen. Your path is gonna change. What you deem important is gonna change. Your currencies in life will fluctuate. Maybe money was important, now family is more important. But then you get older, health becomes more important. It's gonna kind of go like this. Um, so I feel like, Having those big goals and having a vision is primarily to show you which path to go to and which path not to go to. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. I went a bit on a tangent. No, I, go, man. I, <laughs> it's, I, I love it. I, I love uh, it. And I was having goosebumps because that's, I resonated so much with what you said. It was about like I was in a corporate job mm -hmm. also. I left and now I'm setting up my own business. Of course, I have huge dreams. But for example, with this, show what I said to myself what is that I'm going to do a better show next time than what I did last mm -hmm. you know this little action you know yeah, this yeah. little action mm -hmm. and enjoying enjoying each step like yeah. here you know like you and me you know we are enjoying you know and then see where it, where it, where it takes so I really really resonate with the uh, with that but now what I'm seeing is that okay we do all that but there will come those moments, mm. those tough moments will come, the negative thoughts yeah. will come, the, the self-confidence starts shaking. How do you overcome those moments? That's a great question. You know, I could give you a very long answer now, <laughs> but I'm gonna boil it down to um, a couple of basic things. Things about practically building resilience, this resilience muscle. Uh, Learning how to um, maintain our positive attitude and energy and motivation in spite of challenges. And I feel like one of the best ways to do it is to first of all have a mindset shift and recognize that challenges are there for a reason. Uh, you are the main character in your movie of life. You're the main character. And when you think about the best movies that you watched in your life, the best movies have ups and downs. You know, Rocky is one of the you know, favorite movie of a lot of people, right? And why? Why is that? Well, because Rocky went through hardships, right? He's a street guy who ended up making something impossible happen. But there were challenges along the way. So we like to watch movies like this. Would you want to watch a movie about someone who grew up in a amazing beautiful family everyone's healthy and you know lots of money and perfect grades and amazing friends and then went to university you know Ivy League maybe Harvard or MIT and then got the best internships and the best job and then eventually build a business and you know build a beautiful family and they go on holiday and they travel they have all the freedom and then eventually you know that person dies at the age of like 120 in their sleep you know have like a nice <laughs> dream about surfing the beautiful waves in Bali I mean right that's that's crazy you know, you would, you would feel bored to tears watching something like this. We don't want to see that, that's, that's BS, right? We want to see challenges because challenges allow you to overcome them. That's how you grow as a person. So it's about reframing. And I like to use the Stoic philosophy, the practical Stoicism. So Stoics always say, you know, Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, Epictetus, those, those people, um, that things are not inherently good or bad. They just are. Right? Mm -hmm. so, so you think something is bad. Oh, oh, you just, oh, I just spilled coffee on my suit. Oh, I guess I can't use it tomorrow. Well, it's not really bad. It's whatever I believe it is. I may think that is bad in this moment, but perhaps this is gonna lead to something different in the future. Maybe this is a little blessing in disguise. And it doesn't always happen. It's not always a blessing, right? There are objectively bad situations, right? Your loved one dies, you get really sick, right? but you still choose your interpretation of the situation. And, and so then you regain that degree of control. If something happens, someone gets sick, and you say, ah, oh, life sucks, you know, and life is terrible, and let's just end it all. Well, you give away all the control, but when you choose to believe, you know what, let me choose my own interpretation of the situation, let me find the meaning in the situation, you regain the power. A good example, Victor Frank, 
right? Mm -hmm. He wrote the, you read that, right? The Man's Search for Meaning, great Fantastic. book. So he said the only reason he survived the concentration camp, the Auschwitz, was because he, he had a meaning in that situation, right? He said that people who died were people who just lost hope. They lost all the meaning. And he said he had a meaning. He attached meaning to that situation. He had to survive all the atrocities to come out on the other side and to tell the world what happened during the Second World War so it never happens again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I could give you a ton of examples now, which I know we don't have that much time, so I want, but there are plenty of examples. In fact, like, I want to ask you and everyone else watching or listening to this, think about situations in your life when something seemingly negative happened. In that moment, it felt terrible. But then down the line, you managed to connect the dots and realize that was meant to happen. So maybe you lost your job and it felt terrible, right? But then guess what? You got a better job or maybe it propelled you to set up a business. Maybe you quit a relationship, like I do. We talked about it before. It took, I, honestly, man, it, I, it, felt, it felt terrible. Even a year later, after that breakup, I, I was still thinking about her. Right? I st it took me a long time to get over it. It's easy. Somebody cheats on you for like the last two years. I, okay, I shouldn't say it's easy. It's not easy. But, but at least you have clarity. That person is not a good person. Let me move on. Here, we loved each other. Like We just decided we are going different paths, so you keep questioning your decision. But then... Later down the line, I realized, wow, this was one of the best decisions of my life. For both of us. For both of us, right? So plenty of examples, plenty of situations. And I feel like when we adopt that mindset, looking for opportunities in misfortune, in challenges, and learning how to roll with them, how to play with them. You, but also with fears. There is a fear. You try to kill your fear. It's going to slap you back. It's like in martial arts, right? Anybody ever done martial arts? Like if someone is trying to like really push you, you don't want to push them back. You want to use their energy. You want to pull them, right? Um, someone wants to hit you. You want to slip. You, you, you don't just want to like right away hit them back. First you slip and then you counter. Mm -hmm. So you, you want to use their energy. So you want to use the energy of the fear of, of the misfortune against those things. Mm -hmm. I, I know it's easier to talk about it than to implement it. But I feel like honestly everything starts with a mindset shift. And, and, and one exercise I would recommend is very simple. Let you just take a piece of paper right now and just ask yourself, what are those seemingly negative things in my life that happened that turned out to be positive? Little, big things, everything that comes to your mind. And I, got, I, I, got, I guarantee you, the moment you write down a couple of things, that in itself will change your mindset. And keep that paper in your pocket. Just keep it next to you. Keep it on your desk. Keep it on your mirror. And when you go through a hardship, look at it and just remind yourself, oh, I have five things or maybe seven things on the list. Okay, well, I'm going through a challenge now. Someone broke my heart. I lost my job, right? What, I lost a big client. What if I could add this thing to this list two years down the line? What if I could laugh about this situation two years down the line? What if one day I can look back and think, wow, this was the best thing that happened. Oh, I missed my flight. I didn't go to the conference. Oh, maybe this is the best thing that happened because that altered the chain of events forever, right? It, it just alters your trajectory of your life. Maybe as a result, you're going to meet somebody who will become a massive business partner or a massive mm -hmm. client, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, you just start thinking completely differently. And you realize that it's easier to smile, it's easier to stay resilient and to go out there and to slay those dragons. I mean, that was so good. I think reframing, it's one of the most powerful tools mm -hmm. for personal development to overcome setbacks. <sighs> Wow, man, and let me breathe a little bit. This conversation was so, 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 so good. We're coming to the end, and I have one last question for you. People ask you a lot of questions, mm -hmm. but what is one question that no one has asked you before and you would love to answer? Mm -hmm. So that, that is a very good question. <laughs> one question, um, I think one thing that people don't ask, usually people ask about industry stuff, right? in terms of what I do, right? How to get on stages, how to become a more confident presenter, how to build an online course, right? So one thing that people don't ask me about is what pisses you off about the world? What pisses you off, right? Because people don't like controversy. So, so let me tell you, right? Like there are a couple of things. And I, 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 but let me just stick to one primarily. I think nowadays we got so stuck in our political co correctness and like trying to make sure that we don't offend anybody. Oh, you can't say this, you cannot say that because you're gonna offend somebody. That we are afraid to speak our minds. We are afraid, we, we are no longer authentic. And also, 
We spend so much time trying to figure out if something is offensive or not that we don't give enough time to issues that really matter. Like for example, human trafficking. Like right now, there are people, including kids, being trafficked, like literally trafficked. Um, and it's terrible, right? We don't, we don't really care, we don't talk about things such as animal abuse as well. It happens all the time, uh, right? When you look at some of the, the massive factories, people don't know where their food is coming from. Now, I have nothing against, you know, um, an old lady having a farm and killing a chicken, right? Personally, I'm vegetarian, but nothing against that. Cycle of life, I get it, you know, or sustainable farms, organic, I get that. But when you look at the, the, the mass production, it's ridiculous, right? Like, like the, the hen is being born and it spends the entire life in a little cage or force feeding animals so they get liver damage so they taste better. Mm. I could go on and on, right? But, but it's absolutely ridiculous. And there are many, many other issues. And I feel like rather than just focusing on someone got offended, let's focus on the real issues. Let's give the spotlight to those real issues that matter because we, we, we don't do it enough. And literally we are getting to the point in a society where someone could kill your entire family. And if you call him certain name, people will focus on the fact that you are the bad guy because you use that whatever, that, that unacceptable word. And in a second, everyone's gonna forget that he killed your entire family. What matters is that, oh, you, you, you said the wrong word. To me, that's ridiculous. So that's, uh, here you go, here you go. <laughs> this, is, this is one of the things that we could do a separate podcast about and, and go deep because uh, that's one, one question no one asked me about, but I'd love to talk about it a bit more. What a fantastic way to finish our conversation. And Jimmy, it was, I had, I had a blast. I mean, since Likewise. the moment we, we met three days ago where we spent two hours on the preparation call, like, I think people look at you and see a, 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 a big boy. I see more than that. I see someone with a big heart, with big dreams and a big purpose. Thank you so much for coming and wish you all the best. Rodrigo, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Muito obrigado. <laughs> Been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.